Hello there, Taurus. Quite interesting. So first of all, I see a face, okay? A face of a woman. It zooms into her mouth. And she has red lipstick on. And uh, she opens her mouth. She, like, widely. And she wants to, it seems like, shout out something. And so she opens her mouth. And I, I, I see her, like, talking and shouting. But inside of her mouth, there's another set of lips. It was weird. And the, the inner set of lips was closed off. So it seems almost as if you're really holding yourself back this month, okay? Um, you want to say something, but you're kind of like um, deferring back to your better judgment or your higher self, and you're opting not to speak out, okay? And so let's look at the cards and let's see how this is really playing out in your life. First of all, um, I see a smugness about you for the month of January and smug, not in a bad way at all. Uh, what I feel is with these two cards, we have here the hermit. Look at the face of this koala bear. Very smug, right? Working behind the scenes. And then we have the tower and look at the face of this iguana. This is sort of like, you know, I told you so. I told you something is going to implode. You didn't listen to me, and look what happened. And this smugness, once again, like I mentioned, it is not anything bad because I do feel like you have this sense of like a, a bubble of protection uh, about you because you've been diligently working behind the scenes, okay? Um, so what I feel here is there was a situation, and I feel like for, for many of you, this is in a workplace type of a environment, also with family members as well, where somebody is either veering off on a wrong path, taking making decisions or making life choices that were not in their favor. And I feel almost like you wanted them to experience it for themselves. You wanted them to, you know, make the decisions and kind of like live with the consequences, not in the spirit of being spiteful, but you also want them to understand, you know, the, the whole concept about live and let live. You want them to understand that with every decision, uh, you have to really anticipate certain outcomes. And if you're making the decision you need to be able to, to, you know, deal with the consequences. That's what it feels like to me. I feel the energy of somebody biting off more than they could chew. And I feel like it's, it's sort of like somebody is reaping their karma, either for being greedy, for being thoughtless, or for being like overshooting, overly ambitious, and rushing into something that they weren't prepared for, okay? And then I also feel as well, for many of you, this smugness comes in the work environment because you have been staying or shying away from the limelight, okay? You did what you needed to do based on your own set of responsibilities. You handled yourself well. You let others hog the limelight, okay? Because you understand that, you know, um, those that want to, it's, it's almost like, you know, the, the tall poppy syndrome, the people that want to steal the limelight, that want to steal the light, I feel like they will be brought down. And so because of it, you're aware that, you know, whoever shines the brightest, a lot of attention will be on them for good or bad. And so you're not in a position where you're hogging the limelight with anybody you're not putting yourself in that position because you know your skills and your capabilities. And then as a result, when something falls apart, I feel like the brunt of the, the blame is either on that person that's hogging all the limelight, that talks really big but can't really back up whatever it is with their actions, or I also feel like a, a person, especially in the work environment, and I feel like it's a cluster of people that might have made a lot of drastic decisions too fast, too soon. And they're starting to, you know, reel from the consequences of that. 
starting something too fast, too soon, overly ambitious, overshooting, overshooting the mark, overshooting the target is what I'm sensing here. And I feel like along the way, you know, you had your, your hunches that, oh, this is not going to work. I should say something or I should, you know, um, steer them away from that course of action. But I also feel like they wouldn't have listened anyways. And you're aware of it because, you know, they're, they're, they're banking on their invincibility. That's pretty much what I'm sensing. So I feel like you might have been dealing with someone who's quite arrogant, who's quite hard-headed, who's, who's unable to take constructive criticism. And I feel like they're dealing with the effects of that. All right. And then I also feel you're behind the scenes looking on okay and i keep hearing you know i told you so i told you so but you're not going to say it you're not going to gloat you're not going to rub it in your face you're in this space where you are protected in shelter and whatever the effects of this tower situation is happening the tower is very cataclysmic right it's things breaking down and and, and crumbling to the ground so it's going to leave like a, a dust cloud in its mist right and what I see here is you're protected from it. You're kind of like uh, spectating from afar. You know, the, the, you're, you're far away. There's enough distance between you and that situation where you are protected. You're not going to have to inhale that dust cloud. And you're, you're, you're sitting pretty, pretty much, okay? So, for this month... Taurus, um, your energy is, um, I, I feel like it's a continuation almost of like the Aries energy. We have here the King of Crystals. This is the King of Pentacles. This is your energy. You're embodying this really proud, mighty, um, stable energy. Finances are going to be really good. And you've, you, you've designed your life that way where you don't need to worry about your financial future. Things have been worked at, built up over time. And so you're sitting on your resources and you're planning your next adventure. I do feel that, you know, the, this concept about looking uh, off into the distance to kind of dream about, conjure up and trying to figure out where is the next progression for me? What is um, uh, coming in store for me? What's my prospect looking like? What's in the future for me? I feel like change is really coming in and, and, and the message drilling, that's like uh, drilling into this reading is change is very imminent. We have here the Wheel of Fortune, which is about change and possibilities. It's lying right on top of you. And the words associated with this King of Pentacles is courage and commitment, okay? And so I feel like you're kind of torn, okay? Kind of like, do I speak or do I keep quiet? Do I grab this new opportunity or do I speculate some, some more? Or do I just sit and, and kind of like behave as a bystander and see how things are going to unfold? So there's something that's being unfold or unfurled or unraveling around you. And you're content just looking on just to see what's going to happen, just to see that you need more information or just to wait for the opportune moment. But I feel like it's coming in really very quickly and it's something you've been feeling intuitively for quite some time. And yet you're committed to one situation and I feel like that might be the only barrier preventing you from embracing this new change. So for some of you, this is a job situation where something in the distance, possibly further away physically, like um, a, a change of uh, venue, a change of uh, workplace atmosphere or workplace environment, um, something is further down in the distance or further out in the distance that's really beckoning you, really calling you. And you're not really sure whether or not you should go for it because you are committed elsewhere. So you could be in a contract for a certain amount of months before you can shift into a new job. And you want to ride out the contract. 
you could be in a um, like a lease, a, a housing situation, and you're looking for something new, but you're contractually obligated to that lease or to write out the terms of that agreement before you can shift elsewhere. Or I also feel a situation where it's family, okay? I want to move further away, but, you know, mom and dad are aging and, and they want my presence here. And I also feel family as in, you know, I have a marital. The moon is about intuition. It's about psychic abilities. It's about wisdom as well with this owl. And so I feel like this person is very aware, like intuitively and almost in a psychic way. They are aware of your feelings. But not only you hit it verbally, but you also hit it physically. Like you hit the feelings, you, you suppressed it, and you, you kind of crunch it down to the bottom so it doesn't see the light of day. But I also feel like the connection with this person is very strong. There is a very strong, I feel like, psychic and spiritual and emotional connection. It's not just passion and chemistry and fun and, and lightness. But I feel like, you know, it's a very deep, possibly a really strong soulmate type of a connection. Because whatever you suppress, they're able to decipher. Whatever you don't say to them, they're able to hear it, you know, in their psyche. So they're, they're, they're very, very in tune with you. Okay? Um, I also feel as if there is a, a distance between the two of you, either emotional or otherwise, because I do feel like this person, they're able to read you, but I don't feel that you're able to read them. And so you might not feel like they, the feelings are reciprocal. You might not feel like you might not feel like they're on the same page. You might also feel like the weight of your emotions and your feelings are too much for you to handle. And you are afraid that they don't feel the same way. And so you, you kind of, you know, push it down to the edge of your being because you don't want them to know. The, the strength or just, just the, 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 the sheer, like, impact of what you're feeling so I'm, I'm hearing like the word impact but like it's also packing down and then you know impact something is impacted it's packed down it, it's it's like bursting at the seams wanting to speak and, and verbalize something but not being able to not wanting to lose control not wanting to lose control not wanting to be, not wanting to express something when it's not reciprocated. So you're feeling very strongly, you're not able to verbalize it. You're not able to read the other person. You're not able to understand where they're coming from, how they feel about you, whether or not they are feeling the same way that you're feeling. So this is a, it's an uncomfortable place to be. In the meantime though, I'm sensing that you're distracting yourself with, you know, practical things that you're doing. I feel many of you are um, taking really good care of yourself physically, okay? Um, you're feeling vitality. You're feeling good, like just um, getting over ailments, feeling kind of like at the peak of your physical best, taking really good care of yourself, going to the gym, lifting weights, eating well getting enough sleep and getting enough rest. Even though this emotional, I, I want to say sore spot, is really front and center in your emotional life, you're doing other things to distra distract yourself because you feel like it's almost silly, okay? It's, it's silly for me to dwell on this. It's silly for me to, you know, constantly think about and ruminate over this person uh, about what could be. And I feel like at night you are thinking heavily about this person, about the possibilities that could be if the two of you had come together. And then also, you know, um, wanting, like looking at them from afar, admiring them, but not really willing to go out of your way to, 
I'm hearing here like saving face, not wanting to appear too demanding or too needy or, you know, playing it cool. Okay, the smugness, like playing it cool, not wanting the other person to know how you really feel. So I, I'm, I'm getting here that for many of you, you know, um, the way you might be looking at love and relationships and emotions, I feel like vulnerability is kind of like a double-edged sword for you. On the one hand, you want desperately to be vulnerable, but for whatever reason, you feel like being vulnerable leads you in a position where you might be uh, overpowered by another person, right? And so uh, what, what I feel is you might have a slightly unhealthy mindset when it comes to relationships, when it comes to, you know, putting our walls down so that the other person can approach us. Because I feel like once you let your walls down, the other person is going to approach you. What they're feeling for you, I can assure you, is being reciprocated with this King of Cups. This is somebody that doesn't play games. This is somebody that is um, very sure about how they feel at all times. They can talk to you for hours about their feelings and their feelings don't change. It doesn't fluctuate from one day to the next. It doesn't change. If you behave badly one day, they're not going to love you any less. If you act up, they're not going to love you any less. If you show your vulnerability, they're not going to use that against you. This is somebody who is, you know, aware of human emotions. They're very emotionally intelligent. They can look at you and know whether or not you've had a bad day, whether or not you're grouchy, why you're grouchy, and they can say and do things to kind of like lift you out of it. So I feel like this is a person that has a very good read on you. But the way that you are right here with the shadow, you're kind of like in the dark. You're not really aware of what's approaching. And I also feel like you, you, you might take some type of, of a perverse, you know, um, liking to leaving somebody in the dark, not expressing the full extent of your emotions, not letting them know. And I do sense a lot of it has to do with, you know, trust issues and, and things like that, that you're you're somewhat bringing into this situation and I feel like it might not be fair for the partner that you're dealing with because the relationship seems very cat and mouse and it's not very on the surface. Does that make sense? So please be careful with this if you are, if this re um, resonates with you and if you're dealing with this situation and you feel like being vulnerable leaves you at a disadvantage, I can assure you it does not. And I can assure you as well that the other person is looking your way and I feel like they would come to you if you let your walls down, okay? So the time for us to experience that paradigm shift, you know, to do things a little bit differently so that we can draw in healthier higher functioning people into our lives and for us to kind of like live in the light rather than the shadows operating from our shadow self we don't want to do that anymore we want to be authentic and we want to be true and ultimately we want to be free of our baggage that might prevent us from forming emotional connections with another person because what you have here is a really beautiful soul connection with another human being and I feel like you're disallowing that to come into the picture this card the way I'm looking at it is sort of like basking in the sunlight lizards and iguanas they uh, they're cold-blooded so you know they around noon you can see a lot of them just like um, sunbathing right so that's what I'm feeling here this sunbathing right next to the Sun once your feelings are exposed or once you allow that to kind of um, come out into the open I feel that you're going to get 
a basking in the sunlight moment where feelings are being returned and reciprocated and you're not going to be in a state of, you know, icy isolation or doom and gloom. You're going to experience a lot more happiness in your life, okay? Um, I do feel for many of you, you are aware of this. This moon is all about intuition. It's, a, it's like a sense of knowing. Knowing what we need to do, but dragging our feet, right? A, a lot of us, especially fixed signs. So you guys, um, Leo, so Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, Aquarius, you, we're, we're very good at this. We know exactly what we need to do, but then we are so stubborn that we don't really do it. And I feel like this might be a challenge for you in the month of January, but I also do see it extending across 2020 if we're not careful. So, um, you know, you, you want to work with this energy, operate from the light rather than the shadow side, okay? Um, so once again, I, I feel like you have enough, you know, self-awareness and you guys are smart and you guys are just, um, you have a really good read on people, I sense. And you are the keen observer, okay? This is somebody who is like a, a spectator, okay? Looking from the sidelines, Wanting to experience life, wanting to grab life by the horns, but really fearful. And I also feel that you are aware enough and awakened enough to understand that this is one of your hang-ups with this moon here. This is about higher wisdom, right? And I'm sensing for the very first time you're able to tell yourself and you're able to verbalize your thoughts, like put your thoughts into words. There was something that you thought, you know, I could do without it. And possibly because of shyness, I feel like you feel as if you said too much and now you're trying to hold back. So like you're operating from like the opposite end of the spectrum here. Okay, so let me just leave that thought alone. I want to talk about the last four cards because they are echoing the, the, the same themes here. I touched on this very briefly at the beginning of the reading. Um, there's a situation here that's really drawing you to it, okay? And it, I, I feel like the spiritual message for your reading for this month is go for it. You, you have to go for it, but yet you're digging your heels in. You're comfortable where you are. But like I said, you know, once we are made aware of what we want, what we want to have, who we want to be with, that knowledge can't disappear. It can't be shoved down and, and, and packed down to the bottom of our being. And it can't slink back away into the shadows. Like... It can't be hidden any further. Okay, so on a side note, I feel like somebody might be coming out of the closet. Okay. And the best of luck to you if that's what you're dealing with. And I feel like it takes so much courage for people to, you know, live a life that is authentically them without having to cater to anybody. So if you're dealing with this, I feel that you are going to get the support and the love of your family, your loved one even. So, you know, whoever it is that you're trying to, you know, for example, if you're uh, in a same-sex like um, situation where you're attracted to a member of the same sex and you're not really sure how they're going to receive this, I feel like the, the, the feelings and the attraction is very neutral. And so you don't have to be afraid. And I also feel if you do come out, your family and your loved ones, people that matter anyways, will be very supportive, okay? So that's what I mean. I, I just feel like something is being hidden. And, you know, it's like you've already experienced what it's like to bask in the sun, to be authentic. And now we can't revert back to that shadow side anymore, okay? Um... I'm sensing that something is really drawing you and something is really pulling you away from, from wherever you are. You're looking at it and you're conjuring up all the wonderful things 
that will come into being if you take this opportunity. And yet you're very, very hesitant. And a lot of you are very hesitant because you've had a rough upbringing. I have here the um, Page of Swords and the raccoon. Raccoon are, are pretty much scavengers, right? We've taken over their habitat. And so they're digging through our trash. They're um, eating whatever we have lying around, right? And so what I feel is this is a, a past or an upbringing that was lacking in material wealth, that was lacking in resources, okay? You've had to be very resourceful to make ends meet, to take care of yourself. And from these humble beginnings, you've made it and you've become very financially solid, it's just solid, okay? And so you're very risk averse. You don't want to make a wrong move. You don't want to fall from your pedestal. You don't want to miscalculate. You might have witnessed that miscalculation from somebody who, you know, was quite arrogant. And you saw them tumbling down, falling off their pedestal. You don't want the same thing to happen to you. And so you're very meticulous and methodical about the things that you're willing to undertake. And I feel almost like you're turning your back away from this opportunity. You're turning your back from this opportunity. Or turning away from this opportunity. Because it comes with it a lot of risk. Okay? It comes with a lot of risk. It could be a move that you're not sure if you're going to like the new city. It could be a change in venue and you're not sure if you should sell your house. It could be a new person and you're not really sure. Are they fickle? Or are they going to be there for me for the long haul? Are they a shapeshifter? Because this is an octopus, but also like a cuttlefish. You know, the, the kind that blends in with their environment. Is this like a social chameleon? Or are they very sincere with the way they feel about me? And so there's a lot at stake here. And I do see this push and pull uh, tug of war that's internal to you. And you're not really sure which direction you should head to. I'm going to pull out a few more cards because this is interesting. And I hope I can, you know, provide you with guidance, for, especially for those who are dealing with this. Give me some advice for Taurus, please. I love this deck, by the way. This is the Spirit Song Tarot. Uh, this is by one of my favorite artists. Her name is Poli uh, is Paulina Cassidy. I'm stumbling over words a lot with your reading, so I feel like you want to say something, but you're very afraid. You're very nervous, potentially. I got this as a uh, Christmas present from my sister who is an earth sign. It's a great gift. So let's see. Advice please for Taurus. Whatever you've been afraid to do, go for it. Speak your mind, speak your emotions. Verbalize it because I feel like it, it needs to be brought to the open. It needs to be brought to the light. It needs to be brought to the light. It needs to be expressed in a sincere way. And so you're feeling something, but you're shying away from your emotions as well. Okay? I'm going to leave it at that, um, Taurus, because that is like a singular message that's coming out loud and clear. So I hope that resonates with you. I hope that, you know, I've changed your mind about this. And I hope that it is helpful for you as we progress through January.